guys, Wordy Nerd here, back with another video. Today, we'll be looking at an yet another video where we see how to use different combinations to make a good FLL robot. This time, it will be about box robots versus non-box robots. You probably hear this argument a lot because it comes up a lot in FLL. What really are the advantages of a box robot or do they look fancy? Find out in this video. I hope you enjoy. What exactly do I mean when I say casing on the outside of a robot? Well, I'll show you. This is what I mean by the casing. This is just a simple box created using a couple of these Lego panels and these O pieces. If you're planning on making a box robot, I would highly recommend getting these panels because they're very good to cover large ground while not having to buy so many O pieces because the O pieces are smaller by quite a bit. The way I'll put this on is I have two beams in the back and two beams in the front. All I have to do with these beams is simply slip them on and then grab a couple of pins and place them in like so. Then I can just push, push them in and they should be able to support the box. I created this in a hasty amount of time so if you are creating a box robot, you might want to create a better support system. Although I do ma I recommend making box robots where the box can easily be detached and the brick is easy to access. Because unless you have a power plug at the bottom of your brick, changing batteries is a pain. Now that I have my box secure and connected, let's look at what it sees. So this is the box. As you can see, it takes a lot more room than the robot. And although I did leave some space here, what you could do with this space is make an outer boundary and connect this axle to your box. That'll make sure your wheel doesn't go into weird angles when the weight from the robot pushes down on it. It also needs a little bit of space between the wheels and the front. And although some of the space can be removed, most of it can't. So it will make your robot larger, which can be a disadvantage in FLL. However, now let's look at some of the advantages. And when I say advantages, I know there's many advantages for a box FLL robot. Number one, you can align on all sides and along with aligning on all sides, you can align perfectly in the corner. This is a huge advantage for FLL because in runs, if you don't have a robot that's that's precise, on every run, if you place it in the same place or align it with a wall, it'll hi be highly successful. Especially if you have a robot that's not that consistent. Even if your robot is very consistent, I would still recommend making a box robot if your robot is even having slight difficulty because aligning against the wall can make your robot a lot more accurate. Although I said before that box robots can make robots a little more compact, I have to give a little extra credit to the box robot because along, although it may make it a little less compact, box robots can also help you stay organized because they're in a box. If you have a box, then you're more likely to stay organized. Another example is if I had a non-box robot, I might put a sensor out here or something. But with the box robot, I know I have to stay within these boundaries. So if I put a gyro sensor here, and for example, a color sensor here, they're not real sensors, but I needed them for the ex example. So if I put them here, that then I know that I can keep it within this space. Keeping it within the space can make sure a robot is smaller, especially if you're the kind of person to always want to inch out your robot bit by bit. And finally, let's look at the third of the main advantages that I think a box robot has. This advantage is that the box robot makes it easier to organize wires. With the non-box system, you, you do have wires going all over the place, touching missions and obstacles and whatnot. But with the box robot, you have straight edges on the side it's easier to keep your wires in because essentially you have a wall here preventing them from going any further than the robot itself. Which is a very good thing in FLL because I can't tell you how many teams I've seen with the robots catching on missions and running on their wires and it's going everywhere. The robot is going haywire and nothing's going correctly. So wire organization is important. So now that we've sorted out what I think are the main pros and cons of each type, let's see which one is a real winner. And honestly, both of them. It really depends on your style. But honestly, for my opinion, I would choose the box robot over this robot, simply because it keeps it more organized, you can align it against edges, 
and it keeps everything compact. With the other design, yes, it may be compact, but it's mostly harder to organize wires, and it's really not my type of style. However, it really depends on you. If you're a beginner or a little less advanced into robotics, I would recommend going with a non-boxed robot. If you're a little more advanced into robotics and you want to try something new and interesting, I would recommend going with the box robot. It's fun, it's interesting, and it helps a lot in FLO. On a side note, if you're building this kind of box robot, you also want to reinforce the walls. In the link in the description, I will post a shopping link from BrickLink and Brick Owl to these O pieces and these pieces. I don't know what you call them, but I'm going to call them wall pieces for this example. These wall pieces are really good for building boxes because they cover wide areas. They're not see-through except for these holes. They look good and they cover a lot of ground without taking up much space like this in which you need a lot of individual pieces in order to form a box. Individual pieces give more weak points. And speaking of weak points, let's see how we can reinforce this box if you want to be, make a box like I have. When aligning and reinforcing with this type of robot, you definitely don't want beams to reinforce on the outside because that would ruin one of the main points of the, a box robot to make sure it can align against walls and corners alike. So what I like to do is I like to take a long beam, such as this one, a 15 holer, and simply put it along these holes. That'll make sure that there's not en enough play in this because when there's play, it's generally because it's moving forward and backward. And you never want to have that in a robot because it creates inconsistencies. When you press it forward, as you can see, some the pieces in the middle or at the point of pressure jut out more than the others. But it can't jut out if you have a beam like this because it keeps everything straight. So what I would do is I would find a area with many points of contact. This has one, two, three, four. And I would put one here, one here, and one here but I am gonna put one at the top because this place really needs reinforcing. So I find a far hole here, and I also know that your two midpoints have to be connected. This is why I said these wall pieces were better than these O pieces, because the wall pieces can cover more ground and less space. However, I needed, the spa I needed less space for my robot because it's very small. So I had to use these O pieces in order to cover smaller space than the wall pieces because I can't shrink the wall pieces. So now that I have this, I see that I can reach for one more hole here. So I'm going to put another pin here. And now I'm going to put that in like that and turn it over. Now I'm going to reinforce the other side with a little more pins and one more beam. Now, as you can see, there's a lot less play in this area of the section of the wall as compared to this section of the wall. You can obviously see which one less has less play, and that's because I've reinforced it. The most reinforcements you want are in between these two because they're individual parts and they are not the same one, which is why, again, I recommend the wall pieces and not the O pieces because you'll have less individual parts, so less parts to reinforce and less parts of play, which creates a more inconsistent robot. All in all, whether you want a box robot or a normal robot depends on your style. Personally, I would go with the box robot, and this is the type of box I'd use, with the wall pieces and the O pieces. I hope you enjoyed this week's video, and if you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to let me know. Also, be sure to check out my website, which I will be posting worm gear drives and other gear box tutorials and instructions today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as, again, I'm WormGear48, and I will see you next week.